what's up guys and welcome back to my channel today my name is priscilla and in this video i'm going to be trying out a new technique of generating sort of cascading flounce pattern so the way this is going to work is i'm going to be working from a body template on flat a4 sheet i'm going to come up with the dress design decide on where i want the flounce and then trace out that sort of piece of pattern and show you how it works so this is something i remember seeing on instagram and i thought it was a really interesting technique to try out a design before you go ahead to make a full blown pattern so when you've done the miniature design and you are happy with that you can then go ahead and work with your measurements to create the design that you want if you guys would like to see how this works make sure to keep on watching give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already because diy fam is the best place to be this year and without further ado let's jump straight into this video I'm going to be working with the following materials to create this miniature flounce design. I have myself a body template which I printed off of Google. You can find similar shapes like this online. I also have blank A4 paper because that's what we'll be using. I also have my sharpener, my marker pens, my pencil, my eraser as well as my paper scissors. To draw my curved lines, I have a small French curve here, which is great because we're working with a small template and I also have my set square for straight lines. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is to create a simple dress outline. This can be anything that you want to work with. It could be an off the shoulder, a v-neck, a round neck, but just to sort of make the flounce a bit more, I don't know, purposeful. I'm just going to go ahead and create a simple sort of mermaid fitted long dress with a round neck a sleeveless and it goes all the way to the leg and this doesn't have to be a hundred percent precise but when you have an idea of what the proportions of the dress are like it helps you to adjust the length and the layers of your flounce accordingly so when you have this design done you can go ahead and now make a full-blown pattern to your measurement or to the measurement of your client so I decided to do that for the front and the back and I added a zip on the back as well which is great because it just tells you where where the dress will be opened from so next thing we're going to do is to draw in the flounce and i'm going to be going for one that sits into the waist seam so from the waist seam there i'm just drawing out the flounce like so to about the hip length you can make your first layer as long as you want and i'm drawing with a marker pen to ensure that when it's time to trace this off the lines are nice and clear and i'm just going to draw in another line here showing that the flounce ends three quarter sort of in the front not not midway but a little bit off of the center front so next thing I'm going to be showing that this actually goes to the back as well because with illustration what you want to be able to show is where lines end and where they begin and that makes a whole difference when it's time to trace this particular flounce sort of panel off so this is the layer I decided to work with the total of nine it starts from the front and we're going to join it to the back because that's sort of how I want the design to go so because we've indicated that we want the front first layer to be connected to the back as you can see here this sort of gives you an idea of how this should look when it's actually finished and stitched up together so because I want this flounce piece to also be on the back half of the back I'm just drawing in uh, the first layer to start from the waist and end around the hip and I want that to sit into the center back seam so all of these little details count because when it's time to make the pattern you know how wide and how that flounce is going to finish into the back of the dress and that gives you a really clear idea especially if you're working with a pattern cutter the person sort of knows what you have in mind so this is what the front looks like this is how it sort of curves in and out you can make yours long you can decide to make yours even more sort of exaggerated you can decide to have yours only in the front or only in the back but just for the purpose of this video I decided to connect the back to the front just so you know how it works so next off we're going to trace off the flounce pattern like we we'll do for tracing off like different panels 
and I'm going to be starting from the one at the back because we want it to be one continuous piece. So I'm going to be drawing, I'm going to draw up the, the center back line, the bottom curve, the side slants and sort of the waistline and that is going to become our first panel. So we write that as panel one and the way it works is when you're drawing the second panel, you flip the paper to the other side and you match the fold line of your first panel to the fold line of your second panel because what you want to end up creating is one whole pattern piece that you just fold and sew into the waistline of the dress so i'm going in here to draw the panel two which is the first panel you see in the front drawing in the waist the middle and the side slant as well as the bottom when you transfer that one you've drawn on the back to the front so it connects to the first one that you've done and you have two panels like so so essentially you just need to repeat this so when you trace off one panel on the right side the next panel you trace on the wrong side and you align fold edges together so you align the fold edge of the previous panel to the fold edge of the new panel that you're about to trace off so by the time you have everything traced off you have one pattern piece that when you cut in fabric you notch along the folded points and then you pleat back into your dress so i'm just going in here to mark panel three which are going to be marking on the right side of the paper i'm drawing in the bottom curve i'm drawing in the waistline as well as a fold line for panel three because if you look at the original illustration the third panel or the third fold is a little bit narrower than the one on top so it sort of has that cascading effect and it gradually slims down until you get to the last layer underneath so now that we've done one two and three we're going to go ahead and trace the fourth one which we'll be doing on the wrong side of the paper so we're going to align the fold edge of panel three to the fold edge of panel four and once that is aligned you trace off the bottom the sides and the waistline as well because what you really want to ensure is that everything is linked up in such a way that you have one cohesive pattern that when you add your seam allowance you cut out and you fit back into your dress it actually folds in the way that you want so i'm just going to repeat this for all the other panels up on the way i get to the last panel at the bottom which will be panel nine you can add more if you want if you really want you know that long flowy full cascading flounce you can go ahead and make your folds even more just ensure that as you are tracing you are flipping your paper back to front because of how the folds turn when it's on the dress or wherever you want to fit this particular flounce into so i'm just going in here to do this fifth one like so on the right side of the paper and i'm tracing off the bottom i'm tracing out the waist as well as the fold edge which is narrower than the one before this so it's it just gradually narrows down as you progress on because that's how i wanted the shape of the folds to be so i'm going to repeat this for the remaining ones underneath up until i get to the to the ninth one and i'm just numbering them so i know which i've done and which i'm yet to do so i have arrived at my very last layer which is the ninth one underneath which is quite narrow as well and i'm just aligning the edge of the panel before that to the fold edge like so i'm going to trace off the bottom the sides and the waistline as well and then just drawing a straight line indicate that is my last panel and by now I th i'm hoping that all of this should have made sense because when you do it in the miniature sort of scale like this it's easy to see if you like the proportions if you like the scale if you want to change anything before you go ahead to make a full-blown pattern so next up i'm just going to draw a long straight curve and clean up that edge of the bottom of all of the panels like so using my french curve and my pencil so starting from the beginning all the way to the end i'm going to draw in a nice curved bottom hem for this cascading flounce pattern and once that is all done i'm just going to cut it out using my paper scissors and check if the folds are the way i want them to be so i'm just going to cut off the sides cut off where the waistline is supposed to sit and cut off the very beginning which sits into the center back so this is what it looks like and 
as you can see the first panel goes on the back like so which will now be folded inwards on the side and then you have the second panel which is the first one you see in the front and then when you fold the other ones inwards and backwards until you reach the very end you should have your your sort of peplum cascading flounce on the front which connects to the back of the dress as well and with that all done it's finished i hope you guys enjoyed watching and i hope this is a technique that you guys might want to try out i'm i'm fairly new to it and it's something that i think is great because it just helps you save paper it helps you save fabric and it's such a nice way to just test out sort of my illustration skills again but if you guys enjoyed watching this video make sure to give it a thumbs up if you want me to make a sewing tutorial for this let me know as well and i will try as much as possible to make that happen until my next video guys have a good morning afternoon evening wherever you are bye